How you doing? The humble water rocket. We all know what they are. A fun summer activity and a simple way to teach kids how rockets work. In case you don't know how they work, they basically rely on the principle of shooting water at the end of a rocket with the help of compressed air. I have made a few of my own in the past with varying levels of success. However, a different kind of rocket that I have made more of are solid rockets. These are arguably cooler because they include lots of fire. If you want to see them in action, most of my videos are about them. Throughout the brief model rocketry history, there has been a bitter rivalry between water rocket enthusiasts and their nemesis, the pyrotechnic rocketeers. Not really. But let's see which design works better anyway. For this experiment to work, it was important to use the same rocket in both a water rocket and a solid rocket configuration. This will help in eliminating unwanted variables. The rocket in question must favour a water rocket configuration since it's obviously not very practical to construct a water rocket out of cardboard. And yes, this meant attaching solid rocket motors to a bottle rocket. What could possibly go wrong? Getting a reliable water rocket to fly straight and deploy a parachute was easier said than done. I probably did close to 50 separate test flights of prototype rockets to get the design right. I started out wanting to use a cool box fin design, but that was a stupid idea and I should have just used regular fins from the beginning. I did get a semi-functioning parachute deployment design, but I was better off using an electronic system if I wanted to make sure I could keep my rocket. Here's the parachute deployment system that I opted for instead. It comes with all the crazy stuff like a gyro, 3-axis accelerometer, barometer and a magnetometer, all connected to an Arduino. The accelerometer was used to detect launch and the barometer to detect apogee and actuate a 9 gram servo which ultimately deploys the parachute. All test flights with this system worked perfectly. <clears throat> Oh shit. Jokes aside, this method of deploying a parachute on a rocket of this nature worked pretty much flawlessly on all the actual flights. I should probably also mention the technique I used to build the rest of the rocket. It is built from three 1.25 litre soda bottles, two of which are spliced together back to back. I used liquid nails for this. The other bottle was screwed on top of this assembly with an o-ring sealed connector known as a tornado tube.
I actually had to rebuild the splice section of the rocket, but you'll see why that's the case later in the video. The next step, of course, was to do some actual pressure tests on the rocket. Now, these went quite well, and there was no visible failure on the rocket's part. I then varnished the wood on the launch pad to prepare it for the water rocket launches I'll do later on. This was to waterproof it, of course. The next step was to go out to the launch site and actually launch the rocket. Before I play the clip, I need to mention how this project even came about in the first place. It was done under the Science Mentors program, where people like me are paired with a professional in a chosen field and perform an experiment together over the year. You then have to write a science report which I'll link in the description. In my case, my mentor was John Davies. Without him, this project would have been close to impossible. He provided lots of insight and was actually the one that provided all the electronics for the deployment module. With that said, enjoy some of the launch clips we got.
and those of all the launches we did. Just kidding. Here's some of the failures that happened. Here's some of the damages caused by those failures, which includes burning a 3cm wide hole in a steel plate. I kid you not when I say that every single Estes E9 engine flight failed in one way or another, and one of the E15 engines. These engines are notorious for those kind of failures. Those types of engines are quite long and have a brittle grain, which means if they're knocked or go through weather cycling they can crack, which can cause those kind of failures. The reason why there were so many of these kind of failures isn't necessarily Estes' fault. We probably just got a bad batch of them, which could be the shipping company's fault, or they could have just been old engines. Actually, there were no water rocket launches done. This is because of the virus. Also, there was some bad weather at the time. So instead we did water rocket simulations, using Open Rocket, which you might have seen in previous videos, and Clifford Heath's online water rocket simulator, and some other softwares. So, what's the answer to the question? Which rocket design is superior? Well, there is no definitive answer. It's like asking if transport by plane is better than transport by boat. They are vastly different and cater to different needs. Yes, technically, solid rockets outperform water rockets on most occasions. However, water rockets are cheaper, easier, and quicker to build, not to mention the fact that they're more safe and reliable. What I'm trying to say is, these two different types of rockets exist together for a reason. Different people want different experiences with their model rocketry career, and in many cases, such as myself, want to experience both. We should all just let them coexist, and try not to combine them too much in the future. With that being said, I want to open this project up to anyone else daring enough to continue it from themselves, since I wasn't able to completely finish it myself. I know Air Command Rockets, for instance, have a long history with science related to water rocketry, and had made their own high power water rocket solid rocket hybrid. Also, please go check out the Science Mentors report itself. It contains much more interesting information, and is important if you actually want to continue this project. Huge thanks of course to John Davies, and also Jeffrey McNamara, who founded Science Mentors and orchestrated many projects at once. This video took a long time to put together, a year in the making as a matter of fact. So please, if you're new, consider subscribing and sharing this video around. And thank you to everyone that has subscribed in the time I haven't uploaded. Until next time, see ya.